Thank you so much for joining us, Chuck. Truly a pleasure having you on ET Now. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, Chuck Porter, legend by himself. Uh, <laughs> Christian Porter Bugaski, one of you know the hottest shops we've known in a long time. A lot of your critics would say that you know CPB is no more the hot shop it was. Would you be in agreement? Yeah. I don't, well, nobody stays hot forever, other than the Rolling Stones. Other, you know, which is an aberration, right? You, you can't stay hot forever because popular culture wants to move. You know, it wants to change. Yeah. It doesn't want to stay the same. So um, I think the hotness probably has less to do with the work you're actually doing and more to do with perception. Yeah. I mean, I think the work that we've done in the last year is probably as good as any work we've ever done. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I'm okay that we're not as hot anymore. You know, when you're hot, you're kind of a target for everyone. Sure. When you're when you're not the hot agency, I think you can attend the business better. Uh, I like your honesty, and I love your candid speak. But you know, I believe for a lot of agencies globally, life changed dramatically uh, post the crisis in 2008. Uh, tell me, how has the agency business model changed in terms of remuneration, in terms of perception, in terms of power and clout? Uh, post the 2008 crisis, if at all? Well, I think it changed a lot. I mean, it's, it's harder to make money in the agency business now. Margins are much smaller. You know, talented kids want to work for Google or Facebook or, yeah. or game companies or something like that. Um, but I think that, I think smart agencies are adjusting. I know what we're doing is, part of what we're doing is developing our own products. You know, we created a bourbon that we sold to Bacardi. Um, we created a rum now. We're um, we're creating a couple of fashion brands. The decision that we made is as the advertising business gets tighter financially, mm -hmm. um, we need to become our own client mm -hmm. and we need to have equity in the brands that we're making famous. So that's what we're doing. So essentially you've changed your business model. I wouldn't say we've changed it totally, but we've diversified our business model. So would you say that, no. uh, would you say you're in a much better position compared to let's say a uh, purist agencies who only do what they're traditionally supposed to do uh, because you have diversified and hence de risked uh, your business model, so to speak? You know, as far as I'm concerned, we are much better prepared for whatever the future is going to be because we have a brand development arm. Uh, let's, let's get off your CPV hat and let's put on the industry hat. Do you think we're making too much of this monster called digital? Do you think it's overrated or do you think we're giving it well, I mean, enough potential? Digital, I mean, digital is almost meaningless now because it's essentially a part of everyone's life. I mean, yeah. we don't think in terms of digital because that's the way that's the way people live now. Um, I think in terms of data mining and analytics and stuff like that. I mean, there's there's research that says that we're beginning to really irritate people mm -hmm. with all of the marketing they're getting. You know, people are over marketed to, mm -hmm. and it's interesting because the data indicates that. Outside of the U.S., in places like India and China, they 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 have more ad blockers than they do in the U.S. That's so, true, yeah. so I I think that we're I think we're over marketing, and I think the pendulum eventually is going to swing back to storytelling and creative and engagement rather than just getting in front of people. But Chuck, uh, you know, when you say that you are partnering your clients and you are providing uh, you know business solutions for them. The problem is that, you know, how many agencies today can sit on the same management table as their clients and, you know, be part of that conversation? You know, you're already downgraded to being attended by procurement, right? You're being treated like a vendor at one hand. So how does one make that big move? Because it, to me, it seems like clients seem to know more, or at least they think they know more than their creative partners. And so it, it doesn't seem to be a relationship of equals, and nor are they allowing the agencies to do what they're best at, which is, you know, the creative business. Clients can change. You know, if you have a success, um, you know, like for Domino's, you know, Domino's, since we started work with them, their stock is up 1,200%. So they listen to us, you know. Um, and I think that, I think that once you have a success with a client, once you have a successful idea, um, it's much easier to build that kind of trust. You know, you talked about how your business model now is themed to creation of products, right? Uh, but how, how scalable is that model? How many products will you build and 
how much of diversification can you really do? Right now, we have more opportunities than we can do. I wish that we, I wish that we had more people doing it. You know, the, the problem with that, or not the problem, the, the, the other side of that business model is it takes a long time to get paid. You know, it takes a long time to monetize. Yeah, sure. The good news is when you monetize, you get a lot of money. So, you know, it's kind of a balancing thing, and we're weighing it, but I think it will become a bigger and bigger part of our business. Um, you know, you talked about CPB having a presence even in China, right? Why have you not looked at India? You don't think it's a market that will give you enough returns? Uh, you know, I, I, the yeah. answer is I don't know. I have looked at India. I, okay. There's a lot of brilliant talent there. I know a lot of people there. We've had conversations. I think it's just been um, circumstance, you know, partly circumstance. I mean, our our biggest global clients, Infinity Cars and American Airlines, um, don't have a big presence yeah, okay. in India. Fair enough. So, but they have a big presence in China. But you're looking at the traditional ways when you know you expand according to where your clients are going, as opposed to let's say looking at a region and saying, I could also get local clients. Well, you know, the truth is we've never really expanded based on where our clients are. I mean, when we opened our office in Boulder, Colorado, we didn't have a client within a thousand miles. We opened the office because people like to live there, you know, so that's why we opened it. Um, <laughs> But I think that, to a degree, we have more global clients now than we ever had before. And so, to a degree, we're trying to, you know, trying to do a good job for those clients. So, that's partly why we're in China. It's a gigantic market. The fact is, I think, ultimately, we will have to be in India. It's too big not to be. And there's too much great talent here. Thank you so much. And okay. we love, love speaking with you. All right. Thanks a lot.